Heavy rain, it can send more than just runoff to our coastal waters. It can also have human waste and harmful pathogens as well. Our Paul Drews reports on new testing to track how high those levels can get and how long pathogens linger in our waters. On a beautiful day, Kaneohe Bay can be an inviting sight for those who live along the shore. You wake up, you see the clear blue skies and you gotta get out there, man. <laughs> Ka'au Moana Kamaka has lived along the bay all his life, but lately he doesn't get in the ocean as much. I've always known it to be brown murky water, but only recently we've hearing about it having a lot of bacteria. We test every other week and every other week we, there's certain beaches that are chronically polluted. Surfrider Foundation routinely tests coastal waters for fecal bacteria, which can indicate harmful pathogens to humans. Parts of Kaneohe Bay routinely have results above the state safety levels, making them unsafe to swim the vast majority of time. While water quality is consistently bad here on Oahu's windward side, it's even worse for Kauai, where over the past year at four different sites, they all exceeded state water quality standards. The state has set the threshold of 130 for Enterococcus, an indicator bacteria of other more harmful pathogens also found in waste. Four locations on the Garden Isle exceeded state safety levels 100% of the time over the past year. If this number is higher than this and you're swimming in the water, you're more likely to come into contact with a pathogen. Above 130 is considered to be dangerous and can get you sick, and we have measured, like at Kahalu'u, um, 24,000. 24,000, that oh, that's, exceeds the limit of the testing to really say if it's 30,000, it's just, it maxes out. In addition to Surfrider Foundation's twice monthly monitoring, it started a new program to test our waters during big rain events. During last month's flooding on Oahu, researchers discovered the peak of pathogens came after rain and runoff let up. We found that bacteria was very high during that kind of peak flush event. And then 24 hours later, it was, it was still raining, but I think the bacteria may have actually increased. And this is just preliminary data. This kind of saturation of, of all the soils, and then you get complete runoff of that soil uh, into the streams and out into the ocean. Many have learned to stay out of the water during brown water advisories because of dirt, debris, and dangerous pathogens being washed down. But how long should those stay up? This is one of the major questions that we're trying to answer with this multi-year project, and it's when is the water safe to go back in again? And I think for that reason, everybody assumes that the, the you know, clear water is safe and healthy water, but that's not always the case we're finding. This summer, the Blue Water Task Force, including dozens of volunteers, will also sample water from King Tides to see if those flooding events release more wastewater and pollutants to our coast, which may give us an idea of what to expect as sea levels rise even more. One of the drivers for this project is to kind of get a peek into what climate change looks like in Hawaii with these extreme rain events um, are predicted to become more common, more intense, more severe flooding. Paul Drews, Island News.